the easiest fish in the Mediterranean to shoot. Quite possibly the most tasty fish I've had in the Mediterranean. Almost the texture of a crayfish. Fritas uh, ceviche. I wish everybody watching this could not smell what we're smelling. Mm -hmm. Today we're back in scorching southern Greece, spearfishing with Klaus. Klaus, it's 30 degrees. It's not 30, it, it's 40. Yeah. Why are you wearing so much clothing? We are wet, we're going fast. Ready? Ready. On the ammo. Spearfishers have two speeds when driving a boat. Stopped or hammered down. The watercolour is excessive. Grease or Great Barrier Reef? Klaus, what happened to that barrel of that gun? It's white. Losing the colour from the sun and salt. Never washed it. Never washed it? We must have tested it. It's summer. Jeez. What, you, you never lost that gun? That's just use? Yes. Something tells me Klaus has shot, a, shot one or two fish in his time. <laughs> As always, hoping to find Dentex today, but most importantly, above the Dentex, is to learn from Klaus to see him in the water because he's one of the most successful spearfishers in the area. Shoots lots of fish, as you can see by his equipment. It's well used, so if I don't get Dentex, at least I'm going to learn something today. Klaus has thousands of GPS marks to visit and knows all the holes that hold fish. Maria tows him slowly to the waypoint behind the boat. You have to stay relaxed and be ready to dive as soon as you reach the spot. The engine stops and Klaus can see the cave that he wants to fish in. The depth is around 18 meters and I can see he has his eyes on a target. Nice saga. Jeremy, lift it up. Oh, big one. Very nice. Klaus tells me there are a bunch of big lionfish sitting in the hole as well. These are an invasive species with a ferocious appetite. They eat all the native fish and have no natural predators. Except us. Lionfish certainly aren't a hard target for spearfishers, but they do provide a fantastic meal. One has to be extremely careful of the spines on the dorsal, pectoral, anal and ventral fins. They contain a neuromuscular toxin which is extremely painful if stung, similar to the deadly stonefish. The best way to deal with the spines is a pair of kitchen shears or scissors. Being accurate with your shot and killing the lionfish outright makes it so much easier to handle. All done and ready to get another. I try and look for any of the lionfish that have swollen bellies, indicating they are full of roe. Each female could produce up to 2 million eggs per year. After removing a few lionfish, we move to some deeper spots in about 30 to 40 meters to look for grouper. Klaus is using the variable ballast technique here, which is generally used in deeper waters. Essentially using an additional weight to help get you down and then ditching it before heading to the surface. Klaus is making his way to the bottom, but sees a tail head off into a cave. Unsuccessful this dive, he ditches the weight and heads to the surface with minimal effort. The last 10 meters is total relaxation and no movement. You see that fish? No, yeah, what was it? It was a uh, stira. Inside the hole? Yeah, big. But going from the hole, going from the hole out. Ah, very fast. 
We move into shallower water around 20 to 25 meters deep. This isolated rock is generally what would grab my attention when diving in an area like this. Klaus said it used to be full of corvina, but now only lionfish. I was more than happy to try and clear some out of the rock at 23 meters. Sadly, it seems like an uphill battle to try and remove all the lionfish. Perhaps a hand spear that you could fire multiple times each dive would be ideal, or maybe taking three to four short guns down at a time. Not too many other fish today, but we have lots of lionfish for the barbecue. Klaus has got two nice sargos. He's done pretty well, but overall not super fishy. But that's normally what I experience in Greece, so um, I'm not even mad. I absolutely adore the long summer days in Europe. It gives you the opportunity to spearfish during the day and catch a sunset. Panos, this isn't a common fish in Greece. It tends to be now because uh, lionfish is an invasive species over so the last couple of years. They've been everywhere, uh, all over the south of uh, the Mediterranean. And the only way to fight the invasion is to learn how to eat them. And they're actually pretty good to eat. So uh, let's try them tonight. Uh, yes. let, let me fillet this and then... I mean, it looks, it looks good so far. Yeah. Actually, I, it's one of my favorite fish to eat as a uh, ceviche. You don't have to use a knife, you can just peel no, it. No, really, you just peel it and it comes right off. I'm just going to cut it rough and uh, we'll marinate it in a little bit of salt, olive oil, and then the different citrus like we had the other night. It's all earthy herbs that we're going to use today. So, this is oregano. Madonna. Okay, and this is the rosemary, and this is a thyme. Normally, stuff you associate with like lamb and meat and that sort of stuff, isn't it? Like uh, rosemary, not so much seafood, but it goes well with the lionfish. Actually, rosemary we use a lot in in, in lamb, I think, but uh, also in fish. Okay, it goes really, really good in fish. Rosemary and garlic. This has the herbs from the garden in it. It has the thyme, oregano, and rosemary, freshly picked. Stuff into the gut cavity, into the oven, al forno. Paniotis insisted that I try one of his Greek chilies. He told me they were a nice flavor, but mild. Try that. Let's see. told me the chili was not very hot, but we obviously have different uh, measures of what hot is because. Look at you sweat. Yeah. I'm just coming in for a Oh gosh. I'll be fine eventually. Oh, far out. By the time I could actually speak properly again, the lionfish had finished baking in the oven. Smells absolutely incredible. Those local herbs, the thyme, the rosemary, the oregano, a couple of nice invasive species doing our part for the environment and eating them. Mm. Hannah, would you like to try this first? Mm. Mm. This is your lionfish. Well, yeah, I think so. Mm. Good. It's nice and firm, huh? It is. It's a. It has that almost the texture of a crayfish. Halfway between the crayfish and the fish. It's really delicious. I think you'll be surprised. Uh, I was sure about Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Klaus and Marie. Uh, another one up this end? Smells so good. The easiest fish in the Mediterranean to shoot. <laughs> oh, 
quite possibly the most tasty fish I've had in the Mediterranean. Would 100% shoot every single one of these that I see from now on. Let's go Derby again and get some more. Yamas. 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 Yes. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. It actually makes a difference for us. Subscribe if you aren't already, and we'll see you next time for the final episode of our Southern Greek tour. Will I get that final Dentex?